Hello there, welcome back to my semantics class. Now we will talk about the second types of lexical relations, namely meronyms. And this topic uh, is taken from Nick Rimmer's book, chapter 5, section 5.1.2. Okay, so go check that out and read for further details. Okay, meronyms. Um, meronyms come from Greek word meros, which means part. And meronyms describe the relation between the part to the whole. Okay, can you think of example? Okay, you can pause this video, think of examples of part and whole, and I will continue in one, two, three. Take the example from body part domain. Okay, so here we see uh, that hand is a metonym of arm. Okay, hand is part of the arm. And within hand itself, we can find relation between thumb, which is part, and hand, the whole. Okay, so thumb or the fingers are a metonym of hand. And elbow is uh, also part of the arm. So you can say elbow is a metonym of arm. And seed is also part of a fruit. Another example is blade. So blade is the cutting part of a knife. So blade is a metonym of knife. Yeah. So these examples describe the relationship between the part and the whole uh, in which the part is. Okay, and in reverse, you can say, this is just ter terminology introduction. So in reverse, you can say arm is the holonym of hand and hand is the holonym of thumb and so on and so forth. Okay, and metonym is important because it is one of the sources for polysemy in language. So polysemy um, is a situation where a word has more than one related meaning yeah in the domain of body parts um, around 20% of the word languages there are um, languages that have uh, this one word okay they have one word that they can use to refer to eye and face yeah so that makes sense because from meronymic perspective eye is part of the face yeah so you can find um the normal human of course eye is in the face okay and there are also some languages where uh, they have one word that they use to refer to hand and arm at least in english yeah so they have one word that is in english to be two words okay they have one word that can refer to hand and arm that also uh, makes sense because as we have seen before that hand is a metonym of arm so there is connection between those two concepts that in certain languages they are called by the same word and i think indonesian can also give example for that situation where let's say when you say your tangan okay when you say to your friend hey my tangan gets hurt which part of the tangan you mean? Is it the hand? Is it the arm? Is it the um, upper arm or where? Yeah, it's not quite clear unless you point uh, part of your hand and tell your friend and they will understand. Okay, so that's how uh, meronym can create uh, polysemy in language. Okay, very important concept. And, but when you think uh and after you you are looking at the example that i've given you you may think that um this is quite trivial uh quite easy it's just part of relation uh, but as we will see um later on that this part of definition how you use part of to describe meronymy is not without problems okay there will be issue and but before we come to that issue I want to talk a bit about some typical or uh, logical expectation from this part whole relations. Okay, so 
um, you may expect that the logical nature of metonymy can be sequential. Okay, so you can um, create a sequence of part whole relations, yeah, um, based on metonym relation. Um, so you can say this is just in theory. Okay, so you may say that if A is a metonym of B uh, and B is a metonym of C, then A is also a metonym of C. Yeah. Um, so if you say A is part of B which in turn is part of C, then it seems to be true that A is also part of C because B is part of C and A is part of B. So it sounds logical to think that A is also part of C, such as the one that um, is shown in these uh, boxes. Okay, And if we see a concrete example such as the sequence of seed, fruit, and plants, um, you uh, following this logic, you may create a, a natural uh, sentences for sequence of relation between seed, fruit, and plants. So uh, when you say a seed is part of a fruit, okay, and then a fruit is part of a plant, it sounds fine. Yeah, it sounds natural. To say that a seed is also part of a plant because um, seed is part of fruit, fruit is part of plant, and seed can be the part of plant. Okay. Another example is from um, domain of clothing. Um, so you can start with a cuff. Cuff is the folded part of a sleeve. Okay, and you. This is the sleeve. Okay, um, lengan baju, that's a sleeve. Um, so you can say that, you can say something like a cuff is part of a sleeve and a sleeve is part of uh, the whole coat. Yeah? And it is also logical to say that a cuff is part of a coat. Yeah? That is okay. And it follows the natural logic of meronym as a uh, sequence of part whole relation um okay now um when you look at more examples and um you use part of uh, phrases in different language use um, the result may not follow the same logical sequence okay that sequence of abc may not always be making sense uh, now think about the relation between handle, door, and house. Um, you may start to say that handle is part of a door. Okay, that's true. Yeah, uh, unless your door is a slide, even is it is sliding door, there is still a handle that you use to slide the door. So that's fine. Um, door is also normally part of a house unless you have a house without a door, which is, I think, um, not conventional. And now you try to follow the logic of this ABC sequence and you say handle is part of a house. Okay, uh, wait a minute. So you say handle is part of a house. How? Um, there is no direct relation. Okay, how, how is a handle is part of a house? Uh, it's not directly relevant. Yeah, so this is an example of how part of yeah the meaning of part of does not always follow a logical sequence and if you see example number three it sounds not natural okay it sounds uh, odd strange another example um, here is uh, from a person and the whole related to this person. So Simpson's finger is part of Simpson. Yeah, so the finger of a person named Simpson is part of Simpson. That's okay. And if Simpson is working as lecturer in the philosophy department, you can say that Simpson is part of the philosophy department. You are part of the English department of faculty of foreign languages. Um, but then when you try to follow the ABC logic here, a Simpson's finger is not part of the philosophy department. 
okay? It fails. The logic, uh, the chain of part whole relation here fails in, in the third line here. Simpson's finger is not part of the philosophy department, even though it is true that Simpson is part of the philosophy department. Yeah, so this is um, issue where part whole relation does not always follow the logical sequence of what you expect from meronymy relation. Okay. And okay, I have mentioned this. So um, in that situation, um, these scholars, these three guys here, propose that there are actually different types of metonymy relation. Uh, uh, meronymy relations, um, sorry. So they dis divide uh, meronymy relation in, in English into four types. The relation between a functional component and its whole. So the component that is functional for the whole, such as the heart and the body. Okay, so um, without the heart, the body does not function. Full stop, okay? So that's functional and whole. Uh, relation same like engine and car okay so without engine car doesn't function unless you you pull the car with your with uh, with a rope so that maybe you call that functioning but that is not the normal functioning and a segment and pre-existing whole such as segment is part of a whole yeah such as the slice and the cake okay so a slice of cake is a segment of the whole of cake from which you get that slice of cake, yeah? And a member to a collection. That's another type of meronymy. Relation between a member and the whole collection, such as here a ship, okay? Ship and a flock. Ship, just one member. And if you see a group of flock in, um, in certain land, um, that is a flock of sheep. So there is a relation between the sheep as a member and that collection of sheep. And the last one is a subset to a set, uh, but this is mostly described as hyponymy, and we will look at hyponymy later on. So um, the logical sequence of yeah, meronymy relation ABC um, only applies to sequence or the types number two and number four. Okay, um, section and existing whole. Um, yeah, so that's how the four distinction of meronymy in English. But there are other scholars that propose more types, yeah, more types of uh, part of relation. Okay, um, I think the first four is similar to the one that we have seen before with the addition of these two relations. Okay, so we have component and integral object relation between pedal and bike. Okay, so pedal is component of bike, um, engine and car, and um, what else? Um, heart and body. So they are component and object uh, relation member and collection the same like before between ship and flock here is ship and fleet yeah, fleet is a group of ship so there are more than one ship that is sailing together and portion and a mass uh, between uh, slice and pie so you have a whole pie and you slice it so that's, that's that is a portion and a mass relation and you have stuff material and object so this is the source material of an object such as this uh, steel and a car so steel um, is the material that you use to build a car okay so that's kind of relation and we have feature and activity relations um, such as paying and shopping so um, shopping is um, an activity and within shopping activity you have certain features such as paying uh, um, what else um, yeah I think that's one of the key feature of shopping yeah you need to pay or you need to pick what you want to shop and lastly we have place and area 
relation okay between Berkeley um, is a city and California is a state in the United States okay you can have something like um, Denpasar and Bali kind of relation okay so we have the four way uh, types of meronymy relations and more expanded uh, relation of meronymy here with six types um, and the logical sequence of ABC meronymy that we've seen before uh, will only be natural will only sound natural if the relation is the same type so such as this example this three sequence of meronymy uh, involve the same meronymic relations yeah they have the same meronymic relations of component and object yeah so finger is a component of a hand and hand is component of a body so that's you can say that finger is also a component of the whole body okay so you have the same uh, meronymy relations in these three sequences and because it is from the same meronymy relations these three sequences sound natural but the one that we've seen before here um, is not from the same meronymy relation type okay the, in the first example it is component object meronymy okay so simpson's finger is a component of simpson as a person and in the second one simpson is a member of the whole collection of philosophy department so philosophy department consists of several person several member okay and simpson is a member of the whole collection of philosophy department but because these two the first and the second examples are from different meronymy types the third one doesn't sound natural it sounds false okay simpson's finger is component of philosophy department no simpson's finger is a member of philosophy department is also uh not working yeah so see um that is why um the relations between the first and i mean between simpson's finger and philosophy department doesn't work out okay it fails um yeah so because they have different um meronymy relations okay um i think that's all from me uh, for meronymy i hope you get some sense of what meronymy is and what are the types of meronymy and how different types create non-logical sequence of meronymic relations and for practical things at home i want you to find more examples at least two but more of course always better so find more example for the four meronymy relation in slide 19 um, you can find more example for these types or you can find more example for the six metonymy types in slides 20 okay so you can work with this as well but that is a choice so you can work with the four types or the six type but of course the six type will have more uh, mark more scores for you uh, if you go for it um, but the point is you do some activities at all okay so um i hope you enjoy the video and i hope to see you soon next week bye